Hey, what's up, team? This is Eddie Gray. Hope you guys are good. Uh, man, what a day. What a day to get this done, to be effective, to be on top of your game. It's going to cost something, all right? Just want to make sure you guys understand that. My name's Eddie Gray, and I'm a composer in the L.A. area. I've been doing this for seven years, and, man, I'm feeling great. been playing music my whole life. Uh, but I got a big hit when I became the head composer of the Emmy Award winning show Born This Way a couple years back. And ever since I've been riding that train and it's been an absolutely incredible ride. Just recently I finished the Kim Kardashian documentary called The Justice Project. I, I believe it's on their website so go check it out on Oxygen. And so what we're doing here on this specific cast is we're showing people how to work inside of their DEWs. We're showing them how to write music in today's music climate. And then we're showing them how to produce it. And 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 then, you know, on top of that, we're showing them how to to pitch it in such a way where you can mo actually monetize your music. All right. And so if you've been keeping up to date with the, the channel, you, you know that we've been working with this specific track and that we have a 45 day challenge at hfmusicacademy.com. And so I started thinking to myself, hey, you know what? Rather than just telling people, hey, here's what you should do. Here's what I recommend. This is how I did it. I thought, why don't I actually do it day in, day out? So up to date, I'm up to 40 songs and the 45 day challenge is over at the end of this month. And so I'm climbing that mountain. It is tough on top of other projects, other clients. Uh, you know, all the stuff we're doing at hfmusicacademy.com, but I am so grateful because I get to do this full time and I get to live a life by design and I'm absolutely stunned and stoked about it. So with that being said, we're going to go into the session today and we, we may be done. This may be the one where we, we go for the jugular and, and, and we finish this song off. I don't know. That's not up to me. My job is to work with, you know, clarity to, to go in there, be as honest and as, you know, blunt as possible, and make some creative decisions. Uh, you know, some of them are traditional. You stick to the facts. You stick to what you know. And then some of them are just left field. You just kind of go for it and you try something else out. So here is the song that I've been working on. Uh, I have not touched the song other than when we've been together. I did make one change, and so I want to show you that change right now. All right, so... You should be looking inside of Logic now. All my settings are exactly where they need to be. And so off camera, I started thinking about, well, wouldn't it be great if we fatten up the, the, the chorus in such a way where it just sounded really thick, really impressive, you know? So I want to show you what that sounds like right now. Let me just hide something. If you want to hide something, in Logic, you can you can do so by hitting Control H, and then if you want to bring it back, just hit H. Okay, so listen to what I had before. It was a, just a bass. Uh, it sounded like this. Okay, let me show that to you in context with the rest of the song. So yeah, I mean, I was really into the whole thing. It sounded really good to me, but... I just felt like we needed a little bit more. And so this is where this comes in. I added a pluck bass, check this out. Okay, so you see what I'm doing there, right? there is I'm just adding a little bit of an extra pluck on top of it okay so that is right there 
So we've got the traditional bass, which we're used to hearing, and then now I've, I have a bass on Serum. I'm using the exact same register, nothing's changed. I literally just took this line and I just dragged it down. So we've got that. All right, and that sounded good enough. I got some extra attack. I was really lifted and uh, I loved it. But then now I added a very intense Serum bass on top of that. And look at what this sounds like. It's just absolutely incredible here. Check it out. Okay, so you can see that this is really coming together in a real way. I'm, I'm absolutely stoked about it. Look, if you if you weren't listening to to you know this before, go check out video one. Go check out where we started. I mean, we were on a whole different level, guys. We we had just brought in some loops from the Novation app. Um, it's called uh, Launchpad, I believe. And then after that, I slowly started fleshing this out, you know, piece by piece. And why are we doing this? Again, I want to show people that you can do this too. You don't have to be, you know, Rachmaninoff. You don't have to be some grand genius in order to work, make money doing what you love. You don't, you don't have to have it all figured out. You can have a desire in your heart, right? You can have the willingness to, to learn something. You can have the, the, the courage to try it out. And then, of course, you know, just, just put it out there. There's nothing wrong with giving it a shot. Look. Anybody who's willing to look like a fool for a little while, guess what? Eventually, you start to wear that crown on your head, and it's going to look pretty good on you, too. So we're, we're helping people compose and figure out how is it that I can express myself as a modern creative. We're all a little bit different. I get that. Not everyone's going to express themselves uh, in the same way. Like, for example, you may not play guitar, but I do. Uh, maybe you play saxophone, and so that's something that you want to implement into your work, your workflow. Whatever the case may be, we still have to find a way to get our music across, right? If you want to do this full time, if you want it to be supplemental income, you still have to be able to get the message across. And so that's what we're trying to propose is like, this is one way that you can do it. This is what's worked for me, and I look forward, you know, to showing you more. So... Let's go into the project notes. As, as you might have remembered, this is kind of how we've we've been working this. You know, we're just kind of we're taking note of of you know what's working, what's not. Um, the only thing probably still in question are these hi hats, as you might have remembered from video two or three. Let's just listen to those real quick, isolated. Yeah, so the initial idea sounded very different than that. And so I it's working for me now. Let me go ahead and just hear it one more time. Hold on. Yeah, I got to be honest. This one sounds almost done. There's still a couple things I want to do. Uh, but generally speaking, pretty, pretty good. Look, we, we have an overall arrangement. We know at the very beginning, we just started with this one loop. I mean, this was all we had. And as you might have remembered, we, we took the song apart. We, we figured out the chord progression. You know, we played it in our own MIDI piano. I chose to use... Keyscape, really, really incredible uh, software instrument. And uh, yeah, it, everything sounded real good. You know, some things to consider. Uh, guitars, I may add some risers, some strings, and we took care of this part here. Uh, I don't know if you remember how uh, the melody originally sounded. Let me see if I can bring it back for you. Uh, yeah, right here. Here, check this out.
And so we literally turned that. We were able to take that and turn it into this. Check this out. So yeah, watch the last video for uh, to reference how we did that. We just used the uh, the new sampler. And I mean that, you know, I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to get rid of it. But that absolutely transformed the song. And, you know, y if you notice that these MIDI regions are colored a little bit differently, well, that's just giving me a heads up. You know, I've worked on several songs today. I've done so many submissions, pitched to various publishers, b you know, been all over the place. And so this just gives me a visual cue. Hey, Eddie, um, you know, y you were playing with the melody here. You know, just be aware of it. So here, let's hear, let's hear this back. <laughs> Here, let me isolate it. And so it's these little things that really make music come alive, you know. It's these little things that really make it gel and come together. So as a whole, we have a pretty banging chorus. I'm stoked about it. Let's hear it again. <laughs> I think it's time to add a couple of risers. Let's um, let's find a couple of risers here. I'm gonna go into Logic, Apple Loop Browser. Of course, you could do third-party loops, whatever whatever floats your boat. Uh, but there's something that I, I want to kind of direct your attention to that that may work for you. So I'm gonna type in risers in the search filter. Okay, you know that Logic's behavior is it just kind of pulls up um, anything that's specifically tagged with the word riser. So we get this, you know, plethora of options. If you go to the bottom right, you can see you've got 196 items. That's a lot. I don't want to click through each one. So uh, in advance, I've done my homework, and I'm going to click on this little heart icon, and this is going to tell me, hey, these are the favorite, uh, you know, options, the ones that you've selected in the past. Uh, if you just updated to 10.5, know that there's a, a lot more loops. There used to be 24,000, and now we have 26,000 at our disposal. So that being said, what I want you to look at specifically is not the, the, the favorite icon, but let's move to the left. Here it says beats. And so this is giving you a clear indication, hey, this is how long this specific riser is. So I don't need something super long. I don't need something 40 beats. Um, I could probably use this one. This one's kind of overplayed. It, it's funny, I listen to a lot of music for my, uh, for my company, HF Tracks, and I hear this specific riser all the time. This one here. You, you also have to be careful when you uh, when you select these things because there's also, you know, perhaps hundreds of thousands of users across the world, and and you know if everybody's using that one, then it, you know it might get played out after a while. So let's see. I'm gonna select maybe this one right here. Let's listen to it. I think that could work, and even if it's a placeholder, but here's the deal. I've got four beats, so it's a quick one that I can reference. So let me just drag this down here somewhere. Okay. All right. And let's go in. Uh, control option to zoom. Really important to learn how to navigate the program. Um, I'm going to select my proper snap mode bar, and then I'm going to drag this over to the right. So let's listen to this transition to see if it works. Okay, I like that one. Let me listen to this one. Yeah, I can see that working. Uh, let me show you some techniques to make that a little bit more fluid. So when it comes to the bottom end, my recommendation is that you you um, you cut out the low end of the riser. So I've got this mapped out to a controller here, and I'm just going to create a quick cut. I don't need all this noise in my track. So that's the first thing. The second thing I suggest is that if you're going to add a riser, that you add some movement along with it. What do I mean by movement? Well, what I'm talking about is creating a track 
that has dynamics. I want something that moves with time. I want something that feels um, dynamic and interesting. You know, I don't want it to be in one place. And so, like, for example, if the riser is right here, right in front of you, right? Um, as the song plays, it's going to move to the right side or to the left side. And so the way that I can access those settings, you can go inside of the, um, of the automation mode, but a quicker way perhaps is to turn on something called, it's right here, auto select automation parameter in read mode. Now, why is this important? Well, I'm trying to save you time. As some of you know, I'm an Apple certified T3 trainer. It's the highest accreditation in the game. And so I started learning early on, wait a minute, there's a system here that needs to be uncovered. And if I can uncover it, I can be a better producer. I can be a better artist, right? I can save time. And that's what we're all after. We want to save time, be efficient, but be effective at the same time. So look, if you turn this on, check out what happens. It's amazing. Rather than having to sift through all the menus, no more. You don't have to do that anymore. Now we just click on the parameter that, that we're looking at, in this case, pan. This also could be a low cut. It could be a high cut, whatever the case may be. And the automation parameter menu will update instantaneously. Here, let me click on volume same bit. You see how it just updated by itself? There's no going through the menus. So going back to my initial point, if I go up here, all right, and if I create a, a shift, a dynamic shift over time where the riser moves at the very end of the passage, what's going to happen is it's going to create a sense of excitement, suspense, and realism. There's a difference between listening to something that's stagnant in one place and there's a difference between hearing something move as if it's alive here listen all right that was not the same as just down the center here listen all right and then just for fun i'm going to try it the other way and this time i'll be a little bit more subtle maybe not all the way but just a little bit there here let's listen i definitely like that quite a bit so i'm going to keep that and then rather than having to perform those actions again check this out i'm going to select them they're now in key focus i'm going to hit command c uh, you can move the playhead you can hit command v that's one way another way is you locate the automation node that's n-o-d-e and i option click and drag over so now i'm dragging this over so i can copy the settings it doesn't look like it did it there let's try that one more time and if not you can try that yeah you can try that on your own but that should work give it a spin all right let me move back here drag this over okay and then now we have some dynamics you know, these are not live instruments, so sometimes you need a little bit of help. Sometimes you want it to feel, uh, you know, like like it, uh, like it's moving. Like literally there is a pulse. That's what we're looking for here. All right, so this would be considered theoretically a percussion instrument. You could also call it a sound effect. Um, either way, I'm grouping it with my percussions. So now I'm starting to move everything over to the percussion group as some of you who work with me know I like to group everything it helps my mind just kind of makes everything very clear and easy to to look at so I'm definitely gonna work with that let's hide everything else okay so I'm gonna take one quick listen start to objectively listen to the track and just start to decide hey what are we doing here we're we gonna add some guitars um, I did find some really good samples that I that I like um, let's see if I can maybe bring those in, although those are inside of the the app. And so if I wanted to do that, I would have to cut off uh, some of my cameras here. So I may stick, uh, I may stay away from that. But the riser now has been solved. Uh, of course, we could probably add some other ones, but for now it's been solved. Uh, let's go ahead and listen, and maybe I'll start thinking about this in the back, and then maybe we'll add some guitars. Let's check it out.
Go ahead and tell me what you think in the comments. Again, considering where this started, my friends, you have no idea. If you go through this little journey here, um, I think, you know, in all, maybe it's taking a total of, I don't know, four hours, five hours. I got to double check. But pretty darn good for, you know, just just doing it on the spot. Um, it doesn't have to be hard. That's the message today. It doesn't have to be hard. Maybe it was in the past. Maybe maybe there was a time where it was difficult in the past. Maybe you didn't have the right tools. Maybe you didn't have the right support. Th there's there's a lot of things that we can look at. But but today, during the the digital revolution, which we're all currently living in right now, such a blessing, such an honor to be here. Uh, it, it's your time. I mean, it can happen if you wanted to. I didn't play a single instrument live here. OK, uh, this is all in the box. Um, I'm not a piano player per se, you know, um, I, I just have a desire to win. I have music in my heart and I just go for it. You know, with enough playing, with enough uh, of a skill set, you can climb the mountain. But you just have to get to a place of resolve where you tell yourself, I'm going to do this. No more excuses. No more excuses. It's my time. And then once you've figured out the resolve, then you can figure out all the details after that. How do I use logic? How can I maximize my desktop or laptop CPU performance? How can I become a better mixer? These are all things that come with time. Do me a favor. Go back, check out the video, listen to the production as a whole. I'm going to start mixing this. I don't think I'm going to add any other elements. Uh, maybe at the very end we can add you know some sprinkles but but you know as far as I'm concerned this one's done and I will be submitting it to the challenge and hence I will have 41 tracks at the end of this fine day so here let's go back in and let's start to finish the process okie doke um, everything is looking good uh, the very first thing I want to do is I want to create a cycle region so inside of Logic, you want to hit Command A, Command U. Can you do that manually? Sure, but that takes a little bit of tinkering. Um, again, if you're in the proper snap mode, that's probably not going to be a problem. But if you're using Tick, that can be a rather sloppy affair. So that being said, I know I've, my beginning is right where it needs to be. Let's check the ending before we start to mix. Here we go. Yep, uh, works for me. It's it's professional. L let me tell you the, the the worst thing that you can do, especially if you're new to the the music business, but but specifically the music licensing business, music in general. But I'm saying specifically for this industry, is turn in a track, and have it end prematurely so that there is a pop, a click, a tick, a talk, whatever. Uh, honestly, you make the worst impression that way. So if you're interested in getting in the music licensing business, if you're interested in monetizing your music, there, there are ways to do it. There's, there's an education to be had, you, you know, but, but you have to invest your time properly. So the song as of right now is two minutes. Look, I do this stuff in my sleep at this point. I didn't even plan for this. You guys saw it. There's no tricks here. I just wrote the song if for any music licensing track. It's, it's imperative that it be between 1 minute and 30 seconds or 2 minutes and 30 seconds. It just depends on the company. It depends on you know who you're working with. Everybody's a little bit different. But generally speaking, if you're at that 2 minute mark, 2.30, you are on the money. So everything's working for me here. Um, I'm going to start making some mixed decisions, and we will go from there. If you have any questions, I will hit them at the end of the chat. Um, I'll answer you. And um, any suggestions on future casts, that'd be awesome too. And uh, here, so let's go from there. Um, so currently I have just a linear phase EQ, which is really good for mastering. So this is on the stereo output, or what could be considered the stereo output in Logic, the master channel. Now check it out.
currently in the tracks area we, we don't see the master channel or the stereo out we, we don't see it right so if you control click you can actually show the output track another way of finding that is by going to track output track what's the key command little house command M or shift command M there we go shift command M now we have the stereo out at our disposal why is this useful well if you want to process the track you know create a low cut effect uh, all sorts of stuff you can do here so we want to make sure that's in the tracks area especially when you're in those final moments of mixing and mastering so this is working I'm stoked about it now I'm gonna put a gain plug in at the very top of the chain there's a reason for it number one it gives me a little bit of room wiggle room headroom so let's say I start processing pretty heavy down the chain well I can back off if I need to or perhaps maybe the song just isn't loud enough that it, <laughs> that doesn't usually happen with me but if that's the case then I would push the rest of the chain in series I would push it a little bit harder so this is a nice move to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room from the outset I always start at like negative one negative two so let me go ahead and just numerically drop in those numbers all right and then if you guys have taken my mastering courses uh, currently my course on Udemy uh, how to maximize your desktop and laptop CPU performance has 3,500 downloads We're right about there super ecstatic about it super grateful for it check that out it's a free resource for you so you can get control of your desktop and your laptop so when you're working with it you can manage your CPU effectively uh, there's various tips in there go check it out all right so the next thing I want to do is let's see we've got a gain linear phase all right so after this initial cut at 30 Hertz sometimes I like to just use the mid function here sometimes I'll use stereo for now let me just cut it here um, we can test out the waters later if we remember but that's a that's a nice move and then something I like to do from the outset also is use Q3 if I had to pick one plugin out of all the plugins this is the one that I would pick although not the Q3 the, let's do the, the Q3 here or Q2 rather let's do Q3 alright so from the outset I'm gonna just choose um, a, a master default so this is now cutting off 20 Hertz and 20,000 kilohertz so that's one of my moves that's one of the things that I'll do sometimes just to make sure that the song is is packaged and clean um, so that's one move another move that I like to go to is I love to use some of these incredible presets so let's see if we go under mix and if we go under general purpose balancing these setups here are incredible so just by putting that on the train let's see what we get Okay, so what's this doing? This is giving your song an overall boost. It's just kind of leveling out the entire signal. Everything's sounding really nice. You can see that I had a compressor initially set from the the outset. And so what I'm going to do here is you can see I have a limiter. This is a, this is a move that I do when I'm first producing a song. The way that I will produce it, I will produce it in such a way where um, I'm producing it and simulating a mastering session. So how do you do that? You apply some compression, you, usually an SSL compressor, right? You got the uh, the vintage VCA sound. And then after that, I just apply a little bit of limiting so that, I don't know, maybe I'm playing really loud that day, and, and so I don't want to blow out my ears. I don't want the signal to clip, so I just apply a little bit of a compressor in there, and that will bring me back to level. So now the next thing we're going to do, we have just like a general mix, if you will. Now we're going to set the 
target level meter. Now, what's this? Every song has a certain kind of loudness. It has a, a certain measurement. Think of, um, you know, inches, foots, right, millimeters. Uh, this is a system that we created in order to, you know, designate uh, space and have spatial recognition. All right, well, in the same vein, if we're talking about music, we need a system to be able to um, to organize it and to, to systematize it. And so we have this loudness uh, conversation. And for that, we talk about dynamic range and we talk about LUFS and RMS. These are conversations that we've been having at hfmusicacademy.com. We have live classes on Monday, live classes on Wednesdays, and then on Saturdays as well. So that being the case, we're going to go in here, we're going to take out the limiter, okay? And then after that, we're going to set the target level meter so our song is just as loud as any song on the radio, uh, any, any song that's streaming, any song on any commercial, any movie, it's right there up to par. So let's get that going. All right, so compressor setting is uh, pretty sophisticated. You can see a little bounce here. Uh, in the meter, check it out. Now without it, you're not going to have the movement, you're not going to have the bounce that you get uh, with the compressor. Here, let me play without. So again, this is a kind of simulation. We're just adding a little bit of uh, gel to the track. We're just bringing it together. Uh, it's just good practice. This is something that, that took me a while to understand, like, why would we do that? Um, I, I read it, I think it was a uh, couple years back when I first started. Um, and I just remember thinking, why would you add a limiter or a compressor, to, you know, at the very beginning of the process when you don't know what you want the song to sound like? Well. I came to understand that they were just creating a simulation. They were just trying to get a sense of what this, what is this song going to be at the end of the process, okay? So now uh, we've got the L2, such an outstanding plugin. I, I love this so much. And we're going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna to get a readout of how long our song is. If you've done enough research, if you've looked at popular music, licensing music, you know that pretty much... Uh, anywhere from negative 9, negative 8 LUFS or RMS and, and, and on the low end or on the low range, a negative 16 or negative 15. So I'm just going to get this up to like negative 10 right from the outset. You can see that I have this already set up, negative 9 LUFS. Um, for streaming, you may want to use something a bit more sophisticated, but we're going all out. This is going to a music licensing um, uh, department, and so we want that to to work for that and we want it to be loud when people hear it right all right so let me go ahead and press play and then we're just going to get this meter until we get a reading of negative 9 negative 10 lufs Okay, now you may have noticed that I also reduced the output meter. This is what's called decibel true peak. And so when we're talking about decibel true peak, we're talking about your song clipping or having distortion. That could be a desired effect or not, but generally speaking, this should be anywhere between negative 0.75 and negative 2 decibels true peak. Where did I get this information from? Mastering mix.com check them out they've got the most incredible resources I love what they do love their plugins and uh, I use them all the time all right so target meter is set I'm gonna go ahead reset the plugin and let me start to move it down the chain I know generally speaking this is where I want it to be and so then now we're just gonna apply some more processing here and take the song up a notch all right so Decisions, decisions. We've got an EQ. This is really just one EQ. Um, got the gain plugin for a margin of error. You've got a general balance EQ here, a compressor, 
Now we could add some more EQs to cut away any unwanted weird frequency. So I'm going to do that now. Here under Dynamics, uh, Mix, I'm going to play with these Mix Mud Removal. Okay, so let's try this out. I'm just going to cycle from here to here. All right. All right, so let me tell you, that's something you're not going to want to hear in a song. That sound that I just isolated with the Fab Filter Q3, believe me. So we're going to leave this in. This one works for me. I'm going to go ahead and instantiate another one of these. It's just helping me clean my mix, right? Uh, the cleaner, the better. And so let's listen here. Okay, so that's working for me. Now we're cleaning up house a little bit. Things are sounding a little bit tighter. Here, look, let's listen to everything before. Here we go. And by the way, if I didn't mention, this is without any processing on the master channel. So let's just listen to what kind of a difference is this making, right? pretty happy with the results here and so then now we're going to get into a little bit of tape saturation plenty of these in the market um, there are people for and against these I love it I love the sound I love the texture I, I love the bump that you get so you know sometimes when um, I get to improve the sound of my production I call it a bump the goal isn't necessarily to make these cataclysmic shifts like that's that's not the goal here the goal is to make small improvements over time if you can get your song to sound just a little bit better in 10 minutes in 20 minutes that's what you want to do okay it's super important that um, you work it in such a way where it just sounds better over time now believe me after two hours of these five you know minute incremental bumps you're going to sound absolutely incredible so don't try and change the song as a whole just just try and slowly build it up over time okay all right let's finish this up all right so i've got the oxide tape set up uh, love this plugin absolutely incredible and so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to add a bass bump these are settings that i've already kind of uh set up over time so I really like this one, but I also like this, uh, you know, reduce noise, make brighter. So let's play with some of my presets here and then we'll go from there. liking that works quite a bit um, so yeah I'm gonna leave that you can hear that things got brighter things got punchier this is what I'm talking about 
It doesn't have to be hard, right? I'm making these decisions. It's easy. Uh, it, it's not easy, you know, like overall. I mean, of course, it takes work. I'm just saying it doesn't have to be as hard as perhaps you thought, it, you know, it is. It, if you just take the time, if you just work at it, you'll find a system. You'll find, you know, people that you can work with. You'll find techniques that work for you, MIDI controllers that can help you write chord progressions, software instruments that can help you write incredible string sections. There is no obstacle, guys. So let's just get over it. Let's let it go. Let's move on and let's live our dreams. Let's monetize our music. And let's make it happen. All right. So I'm pretty stoked here. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's any other decisions that need to be made. At this point, uh, I, I may not rely on just my ears. I may not rely on just my intuition. This is where it becomes paramount that we start to use metering as a discipline. Something that we talked about today on hfmusicacademy.com. We have a mixing class today. And we were talking about f being in phase and the correlation meter and all this good stuff. So, all right, I've got the multimeter set up, which I love. I also have, uh, again, we've been talking about mastering the mix. Let's, uh, let's bring up levels. All right, roger that. Looking good. And um, wait a minute, that brought up the L2. Hold up, mastering. Where's levels? Oh wait, I think I have it under metering. Here we go, all right. Okay, so let's look at the overall loudness. What did we say? We said negative nine to what? Negative 15, negative 16, right? Depends on the song. If you're writing a, a, a you know, something in the acoustic ballad world it's probably better to have more dynamic range and, and what do I mean by more dynamic range well here negative 16 would be more dynamic range more than let's say negative 8 LUFS right so it's kinda like think of a cup right less is more dynamic range and the more you push push the compressor, the more you press the limiter, the the further up the loudness goes. This is a trade off, um, and so you can't have all dynamic range and you can't have all loudness. This is a trade off, and you go back and forth. So here I'm gonna press play and let's see where our levels are as far as LUFS, RMS, which are basically synonymous. And I'm also gonna be checking out my dynamic range, which is related but not the same. Let's check it out. gotta love it here didn't I say didn't I say negative 10 negative 9 look at that without looking at it everything's looking good everything's sounding really good um, I'm gonna take just you know a full listen at this point and so then now moving into kind of like the final phase where I'm gonna grab a notebook you know something like this I'm gonna turn my seat around or I'll sit in a different part of the studio and then I'm just gonna take some notes and, just, and of course, you could use the project notes as well. But the whole idea is that you get away from the computer, all right? So I'm, when I play this back, I'm going to listen with an objective ear and see, number one, does it hit the, the genre standard, all right? And if it doesn't, what modifications do I need to make? But number two, is there anything else I need to do? Creatively speaking, technically speaking, what else needs to happen, all right? So we'll be listening for that. If you want to throw in some comments, go ahead, and I'll check those out later. Here we go.
All right, what did you guys hear? Uh, everything sounded pretty good to me. And so uh, I took some notes here. Um, I got the gain. I need that to be a little bit quieter as a whole. So going into the rest of the mastering chain, I needed to to, to chill out a little bit, right? It's, it's just hitting it a little too hard. Uh, it fits the style, but I just figured if I back off a little bit, it's not a bad idea. And then after that, I'm going to lower the bass a little bit right sometimes when you listen from a different position not right next to your near field monitors you get an entirely different perspective on things um, not a bad idea to take like maybe a step back um, and then of course you can listen through various uh, monitoring systems as well the Apple earbuds are really nice check those out um, the synthesizer needs to be more wet and I just like right away my head my head was like hey use the um, the the uh, the reverbs by exponential audio so I'm going to use that Finally, we're going to uh, make these risers a little bit quieter, but I'm not going to do it by means of volume. I'm going to use another technique. And then finally, I'm just going to play with the width just by adding an imager. So let's get into it. Here we go. All right. So first things first, we're going to add a, uh, we're going to, to reduce the volume of the game plugin. Here we go. So I'm going to hit uh, shift to, for find control. I'm just going to back off. I guess my head's telling me five, so I'll start there. Um, you don't want to back off too much, right? The idea is that the volume of the entire song is hitting every individual plugin in series, and it's doing it in such a way where it's, it's magical, right? Uh, you don't want something to be too loud or too soft. And so this is a bit of a, a, a juggling act, but totally possible. You guys just need to know what to look out for. Of course, you know you get your practice in, and you're all good to go. All right, so that's my first adjust adjustment. I'm not really going to check that. Something that I could check out a little bit later. I can hear when it when it hits too hard. It's um, uh, you know, if we talk about texture, you know, think of like um, something really hard, like a, a place, uh, you know, steel plate or, uh, you know, whatever. Um, that that feels very different than you know like silk sheets or what have you, right? And so we're just changing the the texture of it by backing off of the gain plugin. All right, so that feels pretty good. Note number two, reduce the bass. All right, so I'm talking about this specific electric bass here, which we should jot down. All right, so I want this to be a little bit quieter. Um, I like the performance, and so I'm going to use a compressor to attenuate. We actually are just about to get into compression next week at HF Music Academy. And I go deep, guys. We talk about the ins and outs, how to use it, um, why, you know, who, what, why, when, the whole shebang. Uh, compressor has many purposes. The, the reason it was originally created was to attenuate. And then after that, a byproduct of that they found was that it levels out dynamic range. And so it became such an indispensable tool. But with that, you also find that there, there are perhaps seven or eight other reasons on top of the ones that I just listed. And so, yeah, it deserves study. It deserves kind of taking the time to understand all the various parameters. And then, of course, all the um, analog simulations as well. So all I'm going to do here is blend this so it's a little bit lower in the mix. That's it. Here we go. Okay, that's feeling pretty good to me. It's uh, not very distracting. Um, you know, every song tells a different story. So sometimes the instruments um, are playing a, a primary role. Sometimes it's secondary role. Whatever the case may be, um, 
you don't want anything to stick out too much unless you're trying to like you know provoke somebody or make them feel something but in this case you know this is something that's going to sit in the back it's more of a you know of a vibe just kind of an ambient chill thing so we don't want to do too much all right synthesizer this one right here at the very beginning i'm going to add uh this phenomenal plugin right here All right, man, I'll tell you, this is one of the most incredible reverbs I've ever heard. S I mean, sometimes I'll literally just type in like synth and okay, that didn't work. Uh, let's type in uh, ambient. All right, cool. So I've got two matches. I usually just use, uh, you know, what they have because it sounds so incredible. So let's listen to this here. This is all the way wet. All right, so with those changes, let's listen to what happened here. So what you're listening for, you, you want to listen to how the synthesizer has now been pushed back into the mix. Visually speaking, if we're creating a soundscape, like literally right in front of your eyes, if you're creating a soundscape, you want it to be like the synthesizer has now been pushed back into the field, right? You got the stereo field, left, right speaker. <coughs> so you want to make sure that when you make your decisions, you're always thinking about placement. Like, is this snare 808, is it gonna be like really close to me or is it gonna be far away? So in this case, I like the sound. Uh, it made an impression, right? But it was a little too close. So I'm pushing it a little bit further back into the field. Here we go. Okay. okay, I like that quite a bit. Um, I think I'm going to add some delay to that in a second. But before I do that, riser is getting in the way. So we're going to add, uh, wait, it's not that one. It's this one right here, yeah? All right, we're going to just add a little bit of a high cut. So we're going to use EQ to remove high-end information, and hence it's removing volume as a whole. So here we go. Listen to that one more time. Yeah, so I think you know what I mean there. You see it's kind of moving a little bit further back. So sound pretty good. I'm um, stoked about that decision. Let's keep moving down the list. Uh, with. Um, okay, so before I address that, let me just go ahead and uh, play with a delay here. So we could add a delay on top of the channel. We've got EQ. Uh, let me see here. Here's an EQ plugin. Here's Saturation. Saturn 2 just came out. Great plugin. Shout out. And then, uh, of course, the reverb that I just added. So these all work. I'm stoked about it. Um, let me add, instead of on the channel strip itself, instead of in series, we're going to do it in parallel. So I'm just going to go to li Little Alter Boy. Um, I also really like. Uh, let me see, not Little Alter Boy, um, not Primal Tap, what's that one delay? Um, Echo, Echo Boy or something like that, there you go. I also really like D16, they have a great uh, repeater plugin. If this doesn't pan out, maybe I'll go there. All right, and here I'm just looking for a little bit of echo. Now, here, we're not gonna do it so that it plays uh, in the same stereo space. So we're going to do this in such a way where it actually plays on just one side, right? You can have the synthesizer and the delay in the same space, but what's going to happen is that it's going to be very messy, right? And so sometimes by just moving something over to one side, it could be a reverb, 
could be a delay, could be modulation, it could be any effect. But the point is, is that when you move it out of the way, you now have the, 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 the clarity to hear it, but also your listener can distinguish, whoa, there's something happening on this side. It sounds really interesting. Now, of course, you don't want to, um, you don't want it to be obtrusive. You don't want it to be too loud or too obvious, but your listener will appreciate these kinds of things. All right, so I've got this plugin here. Let's go for just a basic, not a chorus. Uh, let's do some like. Mm, try. See what this sounds like. Okay, so notice what I'm doing to the delay. I am filtering out a lot of, you know, the high end, the low end. You don't want to do too much, but you know, it's it's nice when we're listening to a delay and it's not the exact same signal as the original source sound. So that sounds pretty good. Um, and uh, a little saturation is probably good as well. And so let's listen to that now. Yeah, sounds really nice. I'm going to add a little feedback. Let's see if that helps. Let's try that one more time. Okay, let me listen in context. Let's see. definitely working all right so then look last thing to do and this is just kind of a personal tip all right so notice that I haven't really played with the stereo imaging and for those of us that are trying to crank out tracks in you know two to four to six to eight hours which is roughly where this song is I believe we're in the four hour range I could be wrong um, you don't have a lot of time to play with imaging kind of in the track necessarily and so a couple tips. If you're going to use bass, my recommendation is that you make your electric basses mono, as I've done here. With this added pluck bass, you can see that all I did was, um, you know, add a little bit of an attack and a filter. So here, listen to this real quick. So in tandem with this guy, it sounds like this. And so the last thing here is we've got this one in mono, this pluck bass in stereo with like a little bit of delay and effects. And then now we've got this one, which is in stereo 
and I really hooked it up here. It's you know kind of steroid stereo, and uh, check out how big this sounds. Yeah, like if you look at the the multimeter, I mean, look at the size of this thing. Literally, this is the the image coming out of it. When I don't make this stereo, look at the the size now. So some of you are probably like, well, that's cool. That's a nice graphic and all, but what's happening? Well, what's happening is this bass, specifically this Track 71 synth bass, is taking up a tremendous amount of space in the mix. And so it's it's making its presence known and it's, and it's, it's you know, influencing the way that you're experiencing the song as a whole. Again, here's without the stereo. Now, now listen to it and feel it as a whole. Yeah, so that's one tip. I hope that really helps you. I know for me, it was a game changer. Once I figured out, oh, there are various spaces that these songs have to uh, live in, right? They all can't be big. They all can't be small. It's a little bit of everything, and that's how we make it happen. So, yeah, I was pretty stoked to discover, um, to discover that. But then on top of that, again, if you haven't worked on your on your imaging as a whole, you want to use a, an imager plugin. I like Ozone, but at the end of the chain, right before the limiter. So the, the rule goes something like this. If you're trying to fix your stereo image, you want to put the, the imager plugin at the beginning of the chain, like right there, like right after gain, right? So right after this guy, I would have just put an imager. But I'm not trying to fix the space that it lives in. I like the song as a whole. I'm just trying to enhance it, right? And so the imager is a plugin that you can use. Let's say you're not very good at mixing. I tell people this all the time. You don't have to have it all figured out. You can just start music, start writing progressions, play with melodies, start to discover, you know, percussive elements, rhythms, and then just start diving in okay and so at the very end of the process let's say you don't have your production chops up to par one of the things you can do to get there a little bit faster is to use an imager let me show you how all right so i'm going to insert the imager right there this is another one of my go-to techniques i teach this to a lot of people if you go through my instagram eddie gray music you can see i'm helping a lot of different people all over the world guys I just want to make an impact. I just want to make a difference. When I started a little over six years ago, I didn't have any connections. All I wanted to do was make it in music. That was it. If I had that, I was gold. But to find the opportunity was tough. And it was through a series of events that I got my big break. And here we are now. So let's keep rocking and rolling. You guys can do it too. All right? You can do it too. Not just me, but you too. You can do it too. So get yours. All right, here we go. Let's listen to the imager. I'm just going to throw in a couple presets, and then we will wrap this up. funny my punk rock side i grew up in the punk rock era my punk rock side is like yeah i really like the snare i want to hear more of the snare and so you know that that first setting really worked out for me uh but then my you know kind of adult brain took over it's like well 
you know, this is going to go into music li licensing. Hmm, perhaps we should, you know, change our position on this. And so I kind of always like to give it to my punk rock side. I want to make sure that uh, I keep feeding, feeding the wolf, you know, make sure that uh, he, keep, he keeps doing his thing. But uh, anyway, there, there's, there's little things to consider, but you heard it, right? This is not voodoo magic. You heard the, the space that it lives in. It's just so much bigger, better, badder. And uh, yeah, uh, you got to love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So here, guys, let's wrap this up. This is how we do it. I'm going to keep this challenge going. We're going to keep going strong. We'll keep figuring out all this technical stuff as well. It's been an interesting journey today. Um, all right. So look, we got the target level meter set. Uh, again, as a rule of thumb, uh, negative seven decibel true peak is a good place to start as far as, you know, where am I going? Uh, how, how loud should this be? And so that's kind of like a, a safety measure. But then the, the, the very last thing I want to tell you is make sure that when using short term LUFS, this is how I usually start. But then when I, I'm, I'm about to bounce and render a file, I'll look at momentary. But on short term, you never want to go below negative nine LUFS short term. Okay, so we're going to look at that right now. Here we go. Okay, so you can see that's working. And so then now this is where we make the transition. All right, no longer short term. That, that was a useful meter when we were getting up to this point. But now that we're, we're, we're at the final stage of rendering something, I'm going to integrate it. All right, and now I need the song to play, you know, for a couple seconds at least and to see where the song is as far as the overall loudness from top to bottom. Yeah, I'm digging this sound. Uh, some of the final touches that I'll do right now is I'll play with the various styles inside of um, the L2. Here, let me turn off this program that I've got on. One sec. All right, sweet. And so then now we're just going to see, hey, if it's being processed by this algorithm, does it sound a little bit better? I don't know. Let's try it out. So I'm going to stick to modern, kind of has like a, I don't know, modern pop production feel to me. I like the way the bass cuts through, so I'm sticking to it. All right, so fantastic. Um, that feels good. I'm stoked about it for now. I'm going to hit Command S. All right, let's go back to the cycle region as stated. Um, let's see, am I missing anything? Let's go back to project notes. Um, yeah, I don't know if I need these anymore. i got to be honest. Um, I'm, I'll still leave them up just in case, right? Um, sometimes I'll render these files and then, you know, I'll start kind of just making final decisions. But as a whole, I, I really dig this track. I'm, I'm pretty elated about it. So let me just move this over. Uh, that should end about there. Again, we're at about, what, two minutes we called it, right? Yeah, two minutes. Um, let's start rendering and then we'll just, we'll do a couple preliminary listens, make sure this is where it needs to be, and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to hit Command B. All right, 4424, it's the same sample rate that I recorded, so I'm going to go ahead and burn um, both an MP3 and WAV. Well, I may not need an MP3 just now. 
All right, that's good. Um, let's bounce this, and so we'll call this plus. Don't ask me how I came up with this name. I just like the word tether, and I was like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we add tetherings? All right, so let me send this to the desktop. Let's bounce this. All right, so while this is rendering, this is how it's done. You know, if somebody could do me a favor, go into the last videos, add up all the time uh, from the last, I think it's three videos or, or maybe two, and, um, and, and, and let's see for a fact, well, how long, you know, does it have to take to write a song in the world of music licensing? And that's kind of the, the proposition here is how fast can you do it? Can you do it in two hours? Can you do it in four hours? Of course, we want to take our time for our masterpieces. You know, you've got that magnum opus that you've always wanted to write. You're not going to do it in two hours. That's not the point. What I'm talking about is taking your creative gift, the one you were born with. No one gave it to you. No one you know, gave you permission to do it. It was just in you. That's just how you were born. You know, you were hearing rhythms when you were a kid. Maybe you were playing pans and pots when you were in junior high, you're in high school, whatever. Um, if you grew up with an iPhone in your hand, DJing, you know, like one of my uh, my beautiful little nieces. And so whatever the case may be, it's it's in your heart and you you have to do it. It's like a like an obligation almost. Why is it an obligation? Well, if you have a gift, what a waste if you don't use it during your natural life. Right. I mean, isn't that the whole point? And the whole point to utilize your gifts, utilize your uh, your talents, make something of them. Um, if you can't monetize, then perhaps you can contribute. Perhaps you can you can help other people. I mean, the, the, it isn't just a money game. I mean, clearly, I think everybody has gotten the message that it's not just a money game. If you're playing just the money game, let me tell you, that ship left like 30 years ago. That's the wrong game. There, there's a lot more at stake here. There's a lot more at stake, and this is what we're doing at HF Music Academy. We want to help people out. You know, we want to show some love. Um, so let me pull up a program called, I'm not sure if it's called Expose, Expose, but it's by a great company. You guys know Mastering the Mix. I've been talking about them this whole time. And uh, let me see if I can set up my screen in such a way uh, where you can actually look at the program give me a sec let's see yeah all right cool here we are now I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear this the way that I'm listening to it in fact you know what let me bring this over like that okay cool so let me go into the settings output settings let me set this up as right there we go okay you guys should be able to hear that now let me save that all right, cool. So let's let's look at the numbers. Facts are facts, guys. Here we go. Let's analyze the numbers. Let's see, are you guys looking at? Okay. So the integrated loudness. Again, we talked about the difference between the short-term loudness and integrated. So we know that the integrated is at negative 12.8. This is a nice place to be. The song still has a lot of dynamics. Check out my true peak. Why did I set up the L2 the way I did? Here, here's the reason right here. You can see clearly that I'm at negative 0.73. What if I wanted it to be louder? I'm going to render something with a soft clipper in a second, and you can see what style do you want to to um, to work with. You know, it's like you're decorating music, right? You're painting it. How do you want to paint it? Are you, you know, somebody aggressive like a Salvador Dali, right? Or are you, you know, Picasso or something? Are you somebody, you know, from the romantic era all right so let's keep rock and rolling the dynamic range all of this is flush it's working it looks like i have a, you know a little bit of notifications with my phase here but look it's 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 not substantial Th these are just little things so this is nothing that you should pay mind to but the song as a whole is great now bear in mind the the setting that i'm using is called crazy loud so what if we were mastering this for soundcloud youtube um, I'm doing this as a composer, so you can see I'm meeting all the criteria still. Let me just take a quick listen to the song.
quite a bit of silence here. The render was um, was incomplete. There must have been a plugin or something on. I'm, I'm going to go check that out right now. But this is sounding fantastic. I'm stoked about it. Um, here, let's go back into Logic for a quick second here. Um, so there's a plugin and it's making noise. And so the the session rendered. Um, and it was a little bit louder than it should. Oh, you know what? I bet the plugin was this one right here. It's called Speakers. This is my favorite plugin in the game. Number one plugin right here. It's brand new. Um, I, I use it all the time. It used to have a um, a predecessor, and it was called Speaker, and it was kind of very one-sided, very very simple. And so now they've 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 upped the ante over at Audio Thing, and I love this plugin. Uh, go support them. Uh, you know, independent company, incredible. All right, so. Um, I'm going to bounce this to audio so that, you know, I'm not uh, getting uh, complications when I'm rendering. Because what's happening is that plugin, uh, you see how it's rendering all the way out here, right? And, and so these are trade secret, guys. This isn't stuff you could, you know, just find anywhere. You know, unless you've got somebody who's been in the game, who's been, you know, doing the work. That's, that's just not something you're going to hear about. And so here's the track that I rendered. Just to make sure I have it for future sake, for whatever reason, I'm going to hit Control H. We're going to hide it in the background. It's still there. We're just going to hide it. All right, so that's good. And then we talked about adding a soft clipper. So I'm going to do that right now. I want the song to to, to be a banger, right? Let, let's get it to let's get it to be a little bit more aggressive. So I'm not going to change the the order of the imager, but I am going to add the clipper right before that. So let's add a clipper which one do I want to add um see I'm pretty sure I have it under saturation could add big clipper um let me do something I know is going to work let's do where's the t-rex one what's it called is it I don't remember it being called nah <coughs> let me just find it I know it's in here somewhere let's go to t-rex Jeez, it's been a while since I've since I've used it. All right, all right. Let's just do this. Clip. There you are. TR. Roger that. Okay. Let's add a little bit of clipping. And this is something that you should do while looking at a meter. So let's throw these on. Let's see what is actually happening when you're doing this. Why are we doing this? It's going to give the song a bit more of an edge. Will it be louder? Yeah. But more than that, um, when your song plays back, it's going to have a bit of bite to it that you can't get just with limiting alone. So let's try this out. try this and this is something that I take my time with it's quite another thing to do this like in public and you know show you guys the flow but I would really take my time sometimes I'll bounce one two three four five versions of this don't skimp it guys you want to skimp with something uh, you know buy a, a, a two dollar t-shirt or something but don't skimp your time and your energy with this game this is a craft let's not be mistaken sure anybody can just drag in loops that's not the point that's not music music is when you put your touch on it when you put your soul into it and when somebody listens to it they either identify it as an awesome track maybe it's not their cup of tea but they go you know what respect that sounds awesome or they know it's you if you can get to that point where they're like whoa that's in production from x right and, and that's the goal i think for everybody you get to that point where you have a a signature an authentic voice you know, similar to your to your fingerprint, right? Just like, like a unique standpoint on music. I think that's really the goal. So let's go in here, let's render this, and then we will go from there. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed uh, our time together. It's been a, a pretty pretty fun process to to just share. You know, um, you know, as I say all the time, like, look, anybody can make uh, a prefabricated YouTube video. Anybody can do that quite another to do something on the spot you know make it organic make it not contrived that's not a simple thing to do 
Um, you got to be willing to kind of put it on the line. But look, I, I come from a place of contribution. I come from a place of, of love and, and wanting to help people. As I said, man, look me up. Go to Instagram, Eddie Gray Music. Go check out all the people that I'm helping out. I want to make a difference. I want to help people. I'll tell you a quick story as this is rendering. When I first started out, um, you know, I've been doing this since I was a kid, right? But there was a point where I was like, all right, got to get a job. I got to work. I got to do something. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I went to a gym once. Some guy gave me a job. I became a personal trainer. Landed on my lap. Was not looking for it. I uh, didn't even necessarily have the greatest body or anything like that. I just knew how to lift heavy things. And long story short, um, I, I, I still had the dream. It was still in me, you know. Sure, you know, I, I went out to do great things in that field. I decided if I was going to do anything, I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to apply myself. Uh, I, I'm a winner. It doesn't matter what the context is. When I get in there, I'm going to be effective. I'm going to make a difference. Uh, we're going to push, right? And so as soon as I got an opportunity to step foot into the music industry, I landed on the music licensing side. Perhaps you're a producer, you're making beats and you know, you, you, you want to be, you know, on the billboard charts. That That's awesome. That's great. I mean, everybody has their own destiny and how they get there, right, is uh, cannot really be explained. But that being the case, once I, I sniffed blood, once I tasted blood and I made my first paycheck, I remember it was about 13, 14, 1500 bucks. I saw it on my statement, uh, you know, on my, my uh, Chase app. And, dude, I was sold. I was like, oh, my God, you can make money doing music? As soon as I figured out that that was even virtually possible, I s just put my whole being into it, guys. I was emailing 20, 30, 40, 50 emails a day. No joke. I'm not kidding. And so what I propose to you is that you can do it, too. I don't know if you're going to, you know, make film music commercial whatever the case may be i don't know that's your thing that's your job that's your responsibility not mine my responsibility is look i made it i did what i had to do and now i'm giving back this was a promise that i made to myself back in those days when i didn't have any connections when i didn't know anybody when i was just trying to figure it out right uh it was hard guys i mean there were some tough moments where I didn't know if I was going to make it. I didn't know what was going to happen. I remember I was a personal trainer once and um, I was about to move into, you know, an apartment and I, I got a call, uh, you know, from my sister. She was like, hey, I need help with the rent for, for our mom, you know, and I was like, oh, man, I was about to move into this apartment. And you can imagine how challenging that was to, to, to be, you know, you're about to move into your first, you know, apartment kind of on your own and I couldn't. You know, and so I gave her the money and man, I had to sleep in my car that night. Real talk. This is not a joke. Not, not right. Just clear. Uh, I remember sleeping in that garage. So I slept in the garage of the, uh, the gym I used to work at. It was called Circle Works. It was on Abbott Kinney Boulevard, Venice, California. Shout out Dogtown. And uh, I slept in that in that garage, man. And I was like, wow. Like, what am I going to do? You know, here I am. What am I going to do? And um, I still remember those days, and I don't pretend that I can't go back, and this is why I grind so hard, and I put my whole being into it. And so um, I appreciate you guys listening. I, thank you for taking the time to watch this. You know, I, I just want to help. That's just the bottom line. I still remember those days. You know, uh, I'm in a whole different place now. You know, i got a beautiful daughter, beautiful wife, a beautiful family, and, and I just want to give back. And so that's my current disposition. So... Here we are. Let's uh, let's look at our final render. I'm gonna go ahead and drag in version two inside of Expose, which you should be looking at. I'm gonna confirm in a second. Hold on. For s some reason, this isn't dragging in. Why not? Hmm. Uh, one second. Just trying to get this to drag in. What, what's what's going on here? Hmm. It's not doing it. Let me uh, let me open up another instance of expose. Could be CPU related team. Uh, I've had this thing open all day. I've been cranking since very early today. Let me see if this does the job. 
Uh, it's not. It's not doing it. All right. Well, either way, we're gonna look at our final numbers here. Ah, uh, yeah. Here we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So let's see here. The soft clipper. What did it do? So um, let's pay attention to the one in, at the top there. That's version number two. That's version number one. Looks like the silence didn't go away, but that's cool. So you can see that the decibel true peak is the same. That's because of the L2, I just realized. But look, the song, you know, the numbers changed a little bit. You can definitely hear that the loudness is different. Look how much bigger these waveforms are than these, right? So here, let's listen to the first one. So let's compare these. All right, that sounded pretty good. Here, before we wrap it up, I just want to go ahead and play with that decibel true peak. Let's get that up a little bit. All right, so let's hear the difference now. Let me run to this one more time. Let's turn this on. And I got to check what's going on with the, the cycle region. Sometimes, uh, I don't know if you guys have found with 10.5, if you're uh, having that bug where it's bouncing all the way out. Um, if it doesn't fix it, then what I'll do is I'll just re-import it into another logic session and then I'll fix it that way. Look, it doesn't matter what it is that you encounter, whether it's like a, a technical problem, a creative problem, you guys can figure it out. I'm telling you right now. You've got all the information at your disposal. It's all there, it's all there. Hey, I want to learn how to create memorable chord progressions. Information's right there. Man, I'd love to learn a little bit more about music theory so I can, I can, I can have it in my back pocket. I'd love to learn a little bit more about music theory. You can learn it in an afternoon, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. All right. Uh, what else? Man, I have this plugin. You know, I, I bought it on special. I don't know what it does. I don't know how to make the most of it. Take one hour, take 30 minutes, do the research, sit down, don't get lost in it, don't study all day, because that's not productive either. It's good to study, it's good to learn, but please, do yourself a favor. Do not get lost in that world. All right, so this is rendering, looks like, um, again, it's rendering beyond the cycle region. So we'll have to address that a little bit later, but we'll get it in. All right, let me drag the wave. Yeah, let's make sure it finishes rendering. I don't want to drag it in prematurely. Yeah, but this song's pretty much done. Uh, after this, once I uh, once we shut off, I'll render all the submixes. So for music licensing, you're going to need submixes, and so I'll do that off camera. Um, all right, let's drag in version number three. And there she is. Right? It's going to be a little bit louder. And I'm sure it's going to have a little bit more grit to it as well. Negative 12.5, right? Just as loud as the first one. Here, let's listen.
Yes, yeah, so one of the things that I'm finding here is that this version that has the clipping, intentionally clipping, right? Because as I told you, negative 0 0.75 and negative 2 decibel true peak is kind of where we want to be. It sounds amazing. I, I love the attack. I love the intensity. And so that's the character that I want to mix my song with. All right, so that being said, thank you guys very much for watching In the Mix with Eddie Gray. If you want more information, uh, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Check us out, hfmusicacademy.com. We've got a bunch of free res re resources there for you. If you want to check out the YouTube channel, you can check out resources for the modern creative. And we're excited, guys. We're excited about helping modern creatives just like you, just like yourself. Uh, just today, if you go to the Instagram page, one of our guys landed a really big GoPro placement. So shout out to DBP. Keep pushing, guys. You can do it. It's your time now. I want to see you. I want to see you make it. I'd love to listen to some of your music. Go ahead and give us a shout out on Instagram, Eddie Gray Music. Thank you very much for your time, and I will see you guys next time. Keep your frequency high. Take it easy.